Thanks. Thanks very much for coming on the Cube. Hey. Good, thank you. Good, thank you for coming inside the Cube. Great to see you. Good to see you. This is ESPN. Are we going to discuss Mavericks or what are we discussing? <laughs> yes, we're yeah. talking what about virtual the desktop checked. versus Asian versus VDI. Who do you think is going to win in the playoffs? That's boring. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we watched the game last night a little bit after uh, the last minute heroics by Dirk. Great series. You've been following Phenomenal. Mavericks. Phenomenal. Celtics Big are fun. our team. We're less Celtics fans. You guys uh, Celtics you know. fans? Yeah. I'm, I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we're rooting for the Mavericks. We love Mark Cuban. Been a, he's been on my show on my, on my past uh, podcast. Right. Great guy. Great, great guy. Great tech leader. Fantastic. Um, welcome so, to the Cube. Yeah, good to have you. What here. do you want to talk about? Big keynote this morning. People, the tweet stream was uh, was a buzz. Is the PC dead? Uh, I think it's older than that. It's been dead for five years. Five years. Yeah. yeah. Do, do you use a PC? Uh, no. Laptop. L laptop. Well, that's a PC too. Okay, yeah, of course day, I yeah. use a PC. Yeah, yeah sure. Most people my life right here, the mobile device. I got them exactly. all. Exactly. You're getting smart enough. Well, Absolutely. I, all of the above is, is what I all use. You don't use a PC? So, uh, completely honest, I, I, I have a PC, uh, but I'm... Uh, let me see. This camera right there? Yeah, right. Okay. So this is my new desktop. <laughs> Typical PC desktop. Typical PC tower you have in your offices. Obviously, you're tr looking sexy with your you know little Mac thing going on, sure, and you're cool. looking cool. We are cool, cool, cool. cool. It's all status. Exactly. Yeah, it's we all are status. cool. We we're definitely cool. Yeah. We know you, that already. Your Thanks. kids, your kids thing. You know, your yeah, so iPads. Cool. Exactly. Uh, that's a, exactly. You know, but a lot of people, hundred million PCs, like desktop PCs, towers are shipped to enterprises. You know, those things cost a lot of money. Three hundred watts electrical power. You have to spend three to four thousand dollars year over year. CIOs hate that, that those things. Now devices like this is my new desktop, two watts versus 300 watts. Say no more. So you're already already green. Under 12 watts, you can get your power from the grid. Under 12 watts, you can get your power from the grid. You don't need a power cord. There is no operating system, nothing running on this. Windows is virtualized, no security, no management, not, nothing needed. I, I were you in the keynote this morning? I, I was listening. For you were listening. Story, yes. Look. How do you watch TV today in cable TV? You buy a TV, you pay a cable TV service, all you need is a remote volume a channel. Do you put antivirus on your TV? You, do you put systems management on your TV? Do you put performance management on your TV? Stop me. Do you put Beckham <laughs> recovery on your TV? We got None of that. D do for None sure. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So <laughs> DVR. Computing is moving to these kind of devices. Cable, cable TV model. How much? Two hundred dollars. This starts at fifty bucks. Fifty bucks. Fifty bucks. We're doing deployments right now in, in Africa in millions of units changing the education. Education clouds. Cloud is real, happening at the government level. So this is the next big thing. Absolutely. Having said that, this is the desktop story. We have also laptops like these. This, not this form factor, obviously. Laptop with a screen, keyboard, just like your laptop. The difference is there is operating system running on that thing that breaks. By the way, they make it in a way it breaks all the time, purposefully, so you can buy more. Our stuff runs 5, 6, 10, 15 so years. So Tar Tarkin, you're talking about... Uh, Did you get that, by the yeah, way? Uh, we're, we're way ahead of you on this one. So <laughs> let's, 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 get, let's go to the jump next level. So you're talking about massive game-changing uh, price point. It's like a dam breaking. You talk about education, you talk about healthcare. You're talking about uh, the cloud powering, new kinds of ways, education. So take us through that next level. I mean, this is going to be an explosive. What's your forecast on units? Because I mean, once it tips, because right. we're not there yet. I mean, this is like, I think, just the tipping point. Right, right, right. When the dam breaks... Right. And the floodgates open where the so connected <laughs> device taps the knowledge base of the social power. Right, right. What's your view on how so that's going to evolve? So let's, let's talk about numbers a little bit because numbers don't lie. By the way, we did not rehearse this. These questions are just coming from left and right. Yes. Yeah. I appreciate you, man. This is the cube. No problem. I, We're I, good. I, I, I love this. We, we, I love never this. we are a beacon of knowledge. I love this. 6.8 billion people in the world, okay? Only 28% internet access. A couple of data points. Every year, 350 million PCs shipped. 100 million desktop enterprise, the mainframe desktop enterprise you have in the office probably, and 250 million laptop enterprise plus consumer. Okay, 350 million shipped. There are about 1 billion PCs in the world. 350 million come in, 300 million retire every year. So about a billion devices, right? Billion PCs. That side of the business has been flat for the past five years. Flat, flat line. Flat. This, these type of devices, small market today, 2009, 2 million units worldwide, nothing, 2 million, desktop, boring, okay? Last year, nearly 4 to 5 million units. This year, the number is going to 10 to 30 million units. If I take the 10 million unit benchmark for next year, that's already more than 100% growth.
And this is eating up the entire desktop enterprise PC business. Now the form factors coming in, in the laptop form factor like that are going to start replacing the laptops you're buying because everything is virtualized, everything is in the cloud. You don't need this heavy, non-green, you remember the analogy, the Hummer. The Hummer version of the PCs, you don't need these devices any longer. Well, you don't drive a Hummer, do you? Absolutely not. I do a BMW. I mean, the big fat bloated <laughs> PC days are over, right? I mean, people think of the desktop. I think of chain Absolutely. to my desk. I don't bring that honking desktop to my kid's Absolutely. soccer game. Absolutely. I bring my mobile device, Absolutely. but I want all the apps. These type of devices and the virtualization software is for every single organization, maybe not every single user. You're still going to have people like cool, good looking people like you. Yeah. It's going to have some you, you know, laptop, you. some laptop like this, maybe some, some laptop in the office, but it's going to be a, a smaller percentage. If you have 100 people in the company, probably 10 people are going to keep those things. The 90 do not n need them. So this goes after the fat middle. Exactly. This, yeah. this is the mass. This okay. is going to be mass. The only hey. thing holding you back right now is bandwidth on wireless and network speed. Well, that's plugged and, in. Right? You know what? You know what? Here's, here's the issue. It used to be the case. In some parts of the world, it's the case. In general, that's moving away. There are more web services than ever before. There are no more web-based applications than ever before. There, is m there are more network connections than ever before. Even now, on the planes, we're getting GoGo -Go inter internet you know, flight in, right? Yeah. We're getting more network connections yeah, than ever Yeah, it's just a matter of time. It's not there today. But not 100%. But, but this, this is the coming. reason. This is the reason yeah. this ex excitement is this. But, but this is just yeah. happening, guys. Yeah. Yeah. The inno innovation opportunity, wealth creation opportunity is just now. Okay, so let me ask you a question. So, I, we're totally with you. The innovation cycle we're living right now with open source now maturing, you got OpenStack, which is you know, a nice, nice vision for Citrix, uh, but even out in the real world, this innovation cycle is really happening. It's first time, it's happening really fast too. So right, right. I think that number, you might go straight up on your, on your shipments. So that being said, what's going to enable, what is this going to enable? Share with us your vision on this innovation cycle. So we're seeing it now at a very fast but early stage. App cycles are going lower. Right. I mean, absolutely Apple, everyone points to Apple. You got Google. Right. So it's a Massive innovation cycle. Super. What's going to be coming out of this? I mean, the best startups are the ones that no one sees. That's yeah. that expression in venture capital. There's all this new stuff happening. What's your view of this innovation so, cycle? So I'm not going to tell you complete truth because I'm going to hide some of things from my own personal investments, but let me share with you the pieces that I can share with you. Three mega trends. Cloud, social media with location-based services, and obviously mobile. mass consumerization of IT through mobile devices you're bringing to office. Mobile devices like these, my iPad, and so on. I use an iPhone. I still use a Blackberry because of the keyboard I like. I still have an iPad, and I have my thin clients in the office. This is my desktop, this is my smartphone, and in a kind of way, this is my laptop. This is my world. Three devices, look at this, how beautiful that is. Everything in my, in my palm. All three devices I use today, right? Desktop in the office, smartphone, my laptop. So having said all this, having said all this, three areas, cloud, IT consumerization because of these type of devices, Location. and social media. Those are the three mega trends where there's a lot of innovation. Those three things are driving more virtual data center, more data center consolidation and virtualization, more, more and more borderless network, network optimization, and more peer-to-peer -peer communication with voice, data, video, all integrated into one box with no firmware running on it. So there is tons of innovation going on in those three layers. Having said that, with cloud coming in, also most of the innovation is going to move from the infrastructure management and security back into application development. GUI, user interface, new apps. I give an example today. There are no barriers to entry in cloud. You, can, you and I can build the next generation company tomorrow with the right idea, right? So innovation is going to come us at multiple levels in multiple directions. The cloud, social, mobile, three things that we've talked That's about. That's our editorial. We, we basically bet our business on those. And the fourth is data. I guess well, it's just, yeah. It creates you know, tons and tons Big of data is something we follow heavily. Obviously, cloud, mobile, socials, what SiliconANGLE covers. It's, it's really, it's where computer science intersects social science. That's our editorial for the two years we've been, been around. It's been a great success for us. Uh, but we totally agree with you. And, and want to ask you, okay, what investments do you have? <laughs> uh -huh, nice, <laughs> nice. But I'll tell you, I'm, I'm doing some social media, location-based services. I'm not doing social media, social media. Some of the things that underneath enabling social media, what are those? Better GUI, better interfaces, better location-based services capabilities, better, better management and security for these things, privacy. There are new set of technologies around the privacy. Huge opportunity. Business intelligence. Huge opportunity. And tying to these things, to these type of devices, provisioning. Some of the capabilities around virtualization and user experience optimization. As a user, yeah, yeah. when you play a video, you don't want to have jitteriness. You want to watch your basketball game you know, on, your, on your thin client with no, no jitteriness, 
smooth. So that's technology. That's innovation right there. So let's talk a little bit about Wise. What are you What are you What are you doing with Wise? Where do you want to take the company? What do you What do you think of the IPO? You know, market seems to be getting more interesting. Wise used to be a public company. It sure, was sure. A very hot company at uh, the time. And Wise is still a very hot company. Yeah. Um, used to Used to be a, a public company, private, public, private. We took it actual private uh, uh, some years back, yeah. and our goal was to basically reinvent the company, re-engineer the company based on the 30-year history, core business, very successful, huge customer base. People know Wise in and out. We've been there for a long time. The channels, now, you got the distribution, all that Phenomenal stuff. channel distribution. You know Wise well. Sure. Phenomenal yeah. team, a lot of IP, yeah. tons of patents. Now what we're doing is taking the company next level with more software. We have a hardware business, second to none. Now we have a phenomenal cloud management, secure software business brewing. Uh, our new vision is all about cloud client computing. What we call is a cloud-based console which manages not only think clients, zero clients and, and cloud PCs, but also touches mobile devices, network devices, like routers and switches, network access devices, the PC itself, the virtual machines, peripherals like a good network printer. Being able to manage, secure, virtualize and provision any device in the cloud infrastructure is our story, it's our vision. It's going to be a software based vision as we move forward. It's a great vision, got to applaud you for that. We're here at Citrix Synergy Live with the CEO of WISE. Um, company that's been known for way back in the day when I was a, a young buck, <laughs> uh, I mean, terminals. 3270 terminals. <laughs> terminals. Right? So, but now with cloud, you, you know, they got the hardware, software's the key, we're seeing that across all our companies. We go to a lot of events and we talk about um, the future, we talk about cloud, we talk about big data, impact of social, connected connect consumer electronic devices. Um, how do you look at Citrix? We just had EMC World right. two weeks ago, SAP Sapphire last week in Orlando during the Cube, and we talked to all the top companies. We'll be at and VMworld. What's different, what's different now is that everyone's got to work together. So, so what does Citrix need to do? Because they laid out a good vision. Right. Okay? The right. vision is they got a triple threat: right. you know, personal cloud, private cloud, you know, and uh, public cloud, and then tie right. it all together with NetScaler. Beautiful. I like it. Sounds right. good on paper. Right. Right. Okay. Right. And they got that pole position. They're right. there. What do they have to do to be successful? And so other vendors as well in this sure, market. Sure, sure. Uh, let, me, let me preface this with, with, with a couple of statements. I mentioned this this morning. I don't want to bore you tears again. Um, first time in the industry, you have IT vendors, right? Service providers, telcos, as well as content providers. Like, you guys are content guys, right? Yeah, sure. Time warners of the world, okay? When you look at the f f you know, uh, News Corp. These type of companies with Telefonica's and AT&T's and Verizon's of the world now working with Cisco's, Wise's, Citrix's, VMware's kind of world. So the worlds are colliding in the right direction, in the same direction. And the goal is, again, virtual data center, network, bring the peer-to-peer -peer communication, bring the content, most important piece, the content to the users at the right time with the right format, whether that's voice, data, video, right in format. one place. That's the format is the user experience, hugely home important. run. Hugely important. So having said all this, having said all this, Citrix is playing a huge role. And this company, I mean, I'm not saying this because it's a Citrix event, it's Synergy. They reinvented themselves over the past 15 years in a very nice way, and they're doing this again. They're moving from the Zen story from the back end, from the data center to the client, to client infrastructure support, user optimization, and now taking that to a new set of mobile platforms like iPads and tablets and, 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 and smartphones and so on. So still working based on the core of the past, taking that next level. As wise, we're doing the same thing. That's why we're in the right, right direction. Yeah, having birds said of that, a feather, aren't you? Exactly. Yeah. Having, having, having said that, in the marketplace, call a spade a spade. You know, Microsoft is doing great things. Google is doing great things. VMware is in their plane. And Apple is coming to the world. Other vendors, PC vendors, are trying to chug it along. They're a little bit heavier, it's slower and boring, but they're trying. Having said all this, competition should make us better, not bitter. So having said that, why isn't the game with Citrix taking this next level in a nice way? Bring the data center, network, and client store all together. We have a hardware software view with Citrix's software view coming together, one plus one equals three. At the end of the day, you're going to see more and more next year with more software around user optimization, security, and management. Disruptive enablers always are the catalyst for major revolutions or evolutions. We've seen that in, in the, the trend cycles over the past few decades. Um, virtualization, a very key technology. Server Absolutely. Virtualization, now desktop virtualization, key disruptive enabler. Um, in play, evolving, maturing. Is there any other disruptive enablers that you see that, that will be that lever right. that is coming around the corner? Great question. Let's say it back a little bit. Like, you know, what did the highways do to the railroads? What did the web do to, to newspapers? Now cloud is doing that same thing to the PC. And virtualization, you just nailed it, is an enabler making the cloud happen against the PC. 
as we move forward from a hardware perspective, these type of devices are going to impact, obviously, like the iPads and the Android tablets and smartphones, also going to impact the PC. You're going to see more location-based services, social media kind of activity also impacting some of the ERP applications eventually. That's going to be a huge uh, uh, disruptive enabler, so to speak. And at the end of the day, without saying too many words, we believe cloud is here to stay. And it's going to be a huge disruption. But at the same time, if we are managing our skill cycles and reinventing ourselves at the right time, in the right way, just like Citrix did, just yep. like Wise did over the past five years, the opportunity is immense. Mm. We're here at SiliconAngle.com's exclusive coverage of Citrix Synergy 2011, live from San Francisco, California. I'm John Furrier with SiliconAngle.com. And I'm Dave Vellante at Wikibon.org. We're here with Tarkin Maynard, CEO of Wise. My last question is, is do you like being private? Is, uh, is IPO uh, in your future? What do you think? Let's be honest. I mean, IPO is always something that we would like to do, and we're looking into options. I mean, we LinkedIn's have. a $10 billion valuation. They're a Rolodex networking tool. <laughs> I love it. I love it. You, <laughs> I mean, have to be, you have to be working with us, man. You should join Wise. Uh, we pay well. Um, okay. so we're looking for, we're looking for, we're looking for a lead sponsor, so uh, <laughs> we'd love to have Wise lead all of our videos. <laughs> so, no, go, so going back to your question. It's going to be worth uh, more than $10 billion. Come on. Staying pri private brings us a lot of value, obviously, and moving fast and so on. At some point, we believe the going the IPO way is the right way. We're looking at that option right now, seriously, uh, um, after many, many years, and look forward to it, actually. Uh, we're looking at all the options we have. Having said all this, with all these IPO activity going on right now, LinkedIn last week, this week, you had free scale and today. Going. The numbers are looking good. There's some bubbliness going on over there. We just need to be careful what that means, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But we have financials in the right place, operations in the right place, we're a ready to go. Good balance sheet. Final balance sheet, we're ready to go. We're ready to go. Tarkin, my final question to take us home to end this amazing broadcast from Synergy in San Francisco is a personal question. Sure. You're a dynamic individual. You're leading and turning around a, a legacy brand that has a lot of brand equity, a lot of resources. Uh, personal, from a personal standpoint, you as an individual, how do you look at the future and how are you going to live your life over the next five years with technology? Look, I really love the stuff that you're working on. This conversation is fun to me. It's from the heart, you know? What we do is so unique. Uh, and this industry is the best industry you can be in. Everything's changing every day. We're meeting good people like you. Every single customer I talk to every day, they're looking for new innovation. It's so much fun. Not being in this, in this industry is actually a loss. So being here, doing what we're doing is everything to me. The money and everything else is a byproduct at the end of the day. When I go to a customer and says, hey, you solved the problem, we're innovating with you, and we're giving better service to our customers, that's the high five for me. That's the high five day for me. That's the touchdown with the safety right there. Tarkin, bring us at home, ending out our broadcast. Thanks so much. Great, dynamic individual. Wise is going to be vibrant. I see, I see good things in the future yeah, for we'll Wise. Yeah, we'll be watching. Good conversation yeah. inside the Cube. Thanks for that. It's a wrap from San Francisco. I'm John Furrier. And I'm Dave Vellante. We'll see you next time.